It is what it is. One of my uh, models to live by. Ladies and gents, Casual Gaming Dad here, and today I'm going to talk about a subject that I have been not looking forward to. Let's just say I've been procrastinating on making um, a video about this subject. And, um, well, I'll talk a little bit more about why. Uh, but as a middle-aged lifelong gamer up to this point, um, the current state of gaming in the future, well, let's just say I have some, some concerns. So I'm gonna get into it and uh, please bear with me. Uh, I don't, I'm a very small content creator not uh, monetized for anything that I make around, not even close to, <laughs> I should say, being monetized for anything. I don't have a script, okay? I, I do these videos for fun, and also just to kind of put my voice out there because I know that there are a lot of gamers out there, like myself, casual gamers, a little bit older, on the older side, who've been playing for a long time and will understand my perspective and where I'm coming from, so. All right, so where to begin? Well, I think it's it's best to kind of just start by, again, I mean, I made a video talking about like how gaming changed my life. So I told them more about my background in, in gaming and where I've come from. And But I think for someone who's around my age or older who gamed for a very long time, the landscape has changed quite a bit. I think the most obvious thing is that gaming is and has become the most popular form of entertainment um, in this type of industry. And just for comparison's sake, you know, let's let's use another very popular form of entertainment that has been around longer than gaming has and that continues to exist into this present day. Uh, that's television, right? Television, and for simplicity's sake, we're going to lump television, streaming, and movies all together. Right, it's the similar form of entertainment where you sit down and you watch, right? You just kind of listen, you watch visually, you soak it in. And gaming is extremely popular now. It's become a very, very, very lucrative industry. And I'm genuinely happy about that. And for a number of reasons. And I think that the most obvious to me is more and more people get to experience video games and what they have to offer. And I think they really have a lot to offer. And I'm not just saying that. I, I know from experience, you know, from the many, many games that I've played, the tens of thousands of hours in video games that I've put into over the course of my life. And... You know, being popular, being accessible is something that I'm just, I'm really happy about, you know. On the other side, there's another perspective, right? Because naturally there are going to be consequences to something being popular, right? And when people in the business world and those with very deep pockets, the rich, the powerful, they notice, they start to really notice that hey, there's, there's something here, there's something going on. This is this could be a lucrative opportunity. And, and it certainly has been. It certainly has been. And because of that, and other reasons, but that being a very, very large part of it, the landscape has changed. It has changed. And in some ways for the better, and in other ways, you know, arguably not so. Now, I think the most obvious of which being microtransactions, cash shops, battle passes. It seems like most games have um, these types of components to them. And, you know, coming from a time where for many years, for decades of my life, a game was released you paid the price for the game, you paid that one time full price, and you got the full experience of the game. Meaning, nowadays, instead of DLC, you would get 
all of that included in the release. And nowadays there's this different model, right? Whereas this one-time payments used to be a very common business model nowadays, we see it in other industries as well, like streaming especially, right? But, but others as well, we see this subscription-based model. And it's very lucrative, it's very popular. And I can see why it is, it makes a lot of sense, you know? The other day, for example, and I'll just share this with y'all, uh, I was checking something on my family's Netflix, Netflix account and I saw that I had been a member since 2011. And Netflix is the only streaming service that I've had, and I'm about 99% sure about this, that I've never canceled. Okay, others I have had, I've canceled. I have others currently right now, but it is the longest staying one um, for myself and my family. And so, just, just, and you know, I didn't always used to pay the same amount that I pay right now. It was, it was less, you know, including inflation and whatnot. But that's, that's a lot of time and money that's been put. I mean, just that's, you know, that's gonna be more than hundreds. That's gonna be thousands at this point, right? Not, maybe not thousands, but definitely over a thousand. You know, between one and two thousand dollars. You know, over the years, and I'm just one customer. Right? So it makes a lot of sense why this is done, you know. I'll give some other examples from, you know, I remember back in 2007 to 2009, I picked up my first MMO, and that was Lord of the Rings Online. And I had a lot of fun with it. I played it with a family member. And, you know, I love the Lord of the Rings universe and the story and the books and the characters, the, the hobbits, the dwarves. I really enjoyed uh, the little people. And I still do in the games. And during that two years, the business model around that time changed. They went to a free-to-play model. This was less common back then. They switched to a free-to-play model. They still had subscriptions and you would get benefits. I mean, let's let's be real here. I still did the subscription because even though it was free to play, it was more like it was free to try. You could play up to a certain point, you know, unlike other games, you know, like for example, in today's day and age, the only game I can think of that really doesn't put a lot of restrictions on the content you can play is Final Fantasy XIV. That's the only MMO I've ever I've played personally, I'm sure there are probably others, but so this wasn't like that. You got full access to the game if you were that. And in addition to that, they opened up a cash shop where they had Latro points. And if you were a VIP, if you were a subscriber, you also got some points every month and you could use said points to purchase a number of different things in the game, including some, you know, very minor, but still pay to win type mechanics and at the time, you know, I was in graduate school and I couldn't play as much as I'd like. And there was a lot of really grindy mechanics in the game. For those of you who've played the game before, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I'll just say virtues, for example. Man, what a grindy concept. So, long story short, you could buy and upgrade these, you know, talents, stats, right? Only to a point, but you could. It wasn't game breaking, min maxers would probably call. I mean, by today's standards, I've seen much, 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 much worse in terms of pay to win. But that was my first exposure to it. And at first I was admittedly somewhat receptive to the idea because of time. So for me, it was like, what was more valuable to me? You know, the, the money piece or the time piece, right? So for someone, you know, more of a casual, doesn't have as much time, time was more valuable. So I was willing to pay. And I'll say that I probably spent a few hundred dollars, maybe around 300 ish dollars or so in addition to that doesn't include the subscription that I've been paying over that time that I was playing it. So that was spent on the cash shop. That's a lot, right? I mean, that that's quite a bit, you know, and also every time an expansion came out, that was another 40 or $50, right? So that was my first exposure to that. And you know, 
started to play other games and I started to see it more frequently and you know here we are today and you know in today's day and age there's you know DLC with every game that comes out there's you know lots of cosmetics and whatnot and you know there were other games I played that had cosmetic shops as well and again my first exposure I wasn't opposed to it I don't recall being upset or bothered. A lot of the cosmetics were really, really cool. They were very inviting. Some of them changed, you know, the voice of the characters you played, not just the look, and then other things, you know. And some of the, I played a game called Heroes of New Earth. It was a MOBA, right, at the time. And you could purchase a lot of those things. My friends and I did that, you know, and, you know, we didn't really mind, you know. It wasn't, it wasn't that big a deal, again, at the time. Fast forward to today, and it seems like every game has something, right? And while I understand that companies want to make money, I mean, of course they want to make money. How else are they going to be able to pay, you know, to be able to make the games that we love, um, to keep them going, right, to do updates? It makes a lot of sense, right? When you look at it from that perspective, right? But there are times it really doesn't make sense. And it's it's a little bit case by case. I can't say across the board that there are times where it doesn't, you know. Path of Exile comes to mind, right? It's a free game, right? You can play the entirety of the game for free. You get updates every few months for free. I played the game, <clears throat> I think, 70 or 80 hours. Didn't spend a penny. Didn't have to. Was I annoyed that I looked like trash in the game? I couldn't transmog even the items that I found. Uh, and if I wanted to look good, I had to pay. Yeah, didn't really like that very much, you know. Uh, I chose not to, the game just ended up not being my style. I didn't really care for it that much, so I didn't support them. Maybe if I'd kept playing, it would make sense, then I'd say sure, you know. But in all honesty, I think that I should have been able to transmog with stuff, and that, um, that really bothered me. Uh, unless they've changed it. I haven't played in a couple of years, or I don't know, two or three years, but unless they've changed it, maybe they did, I don't know. But there are a lot of times it doesn't, you know. Um, one that comes to mind recently is a game that I was looking at potentially picking up, and I'll, I'm will i still keeping an eye on. Um, it's called Last Epoch. It's another ARPG. I've heard some good things about it recently. I've kept my eye on it now for a couple years never really delved into the early access. I've only done that one time with a game, uh, and that was Baldur's Gate 3, and that's because I'm just a really, really big fan of that company, of Larian Studios, and the game's coming out this year. Very excited about it. I played it initially during the first couple of months for about 30 hours, I'd say roughly, and then I stopped because I didn't want to spoil any more of the game for myself. But Last Epoch is a game in early access. They're stating that the game will get released to its full 1.0 uh, at some point this year. May or may not happen. Some people don't think it will. Some people might. But they also announced in a recent update that they were adding a cosmetic shop to the game. In early access. Game's not even fully released and they're adding that. And there's a price in the game. It's $35, you know. For a company that hasn't really released a game and whatnot and I, like I get they had their explanation for being able to just continue to offer updated content and whatnot you know my feedback would be I'm not so sure this is the right time or the place to do that you're already charging for the game itself does this mean that I'm I pay for it once and I'm never gonna have to pay for content updates again is that what it means and also it's, it's a bit bothersome, you know, for someone like me who's just been playing games for so many years and just getting real tired of this model, right? So this, this is the path that every game is going to take? What's next? A battle pass? You know, and, um, you know, while we're talking about it, let's talk about Diablo 4, right? One of the most highly anticipated games for me, personally, right? I'm a huge fan of Diablo. It's had a huge impact on my life. And... Especially since I attended BlizzCon in 2019 when they announced the game and I got to play it and see it firsthand and I was just so excited. I've been waiting a long time, you know, to play this game and I'm very excited about it. Especially because D3 really just 
didn't do it for me. Um, I mean, I did still play it for about a thousand hours, but just really didn't do it. Really excited about this game. Feels really good. Feels really fun. I like the way it looks. I like the visuals. Uh, I like what I'm seeing with the automation. I like the build diversity. I like the depth. I like the combat, you know. There's not a lot of negative negative things I can say. Even some of the things that people aren't happy about, the lack of an overlay map, I'm actually okay with that because, in, in, you know, in the previous Diablo games, I, I felt like I always needed to have that on. You know, I, could, I, I rarely ever took it off and I just couldn't look and see the game. So, look, that's just me. I get it. Some people would rather have that. Uh, I'm kind of glad it's not there because I think it would be really hard for me not to use it, but... You know, look at Diablo 4. We've got the game, the base game, which I had originally bought the standard edition and I just yesterday upgraded because of major FOMO. I'll just admit it, major FOMO. I don't want to wait the extra four days, so that's what I did, right? So there's that. There's battle passes, which they're going to be every season, right, over a few months. Um, I seriously, seriously doubt I'll be buying into any of those, right? But then there's the cosmetic shop as well. Uh, we can transmog in Diablo, so I'm not really uh, looking to invest into that. You know, it's probably not, um, especially because I bought, you know, the digital deluxe. I bought the collector's edition because, again, I'm a big Diablo fan, so I wanted to have that. Uh, uh, I've already spent a couple hundred dollars in the game. And I think that that is enough for now. Um, if they release new content updates with expansions, with new classes, uh, then I will, if I'm still playing the game, I'm interested and I probably will pick those up. And I think that's my way of contributing, okay? Uh, but it's just these models, right? Now, if I compare, you know, the devs working on Last Epoch to Activision Blizzard, right? Activision Blizzard is a very established player base for the most part, granted been some controversies over the last few years it's still irrelevant at the end of the day they're a huge studio that's advertising this game very heavily they have people playing a lot of their other games still a lot of them are probably going to come on over and try d4 right it makes it kind of makes a little bit more sense for them to have this for them to add it into the game especially because they have these models in the other games it's not a complete shock or a surprise uh they've been heavily stating that there will be no pay to win as of now there's there's no pay to win there isn't people are saying it will be maybe I, i'm not gonna argue with you about that i don't i can't predict the future i i certainly hope not you know and i if they do i certainly hope that the content creators such as Riker and all of them and whatnot who have openly stated they're against that will say how they feel about it and maybe blizzard will reconsider but regardless you know, even though I'm not super happy about it, right, it's not going to stop me from playing the game. And for those of you who, you know, say that we should boycott these companies because of this and that, you know, that, that's a personal decision. I think it's flat out wrong for anyone to suggest to anyone else or tell them what they should and shouldn't do with their life, okay? Uh, I stopped playing World of Warcraft following Blizzard controversies. It had very little to do with those controversies. That was kind of like the icing on the cake for me. I was already not having it. It just wasn't that fun for me. It was, you know, old WoW was very grindy, very boring. Uh, most of my friends who were playing it just weren't available when I was playing it. And, and that's that. It, it really didn't have much to do with that, you know. If you want to boycott or whatnot, that's, that's fine, but... Um, I'm not going to tell people what to do with their time, you know. But circling back, right, we look at the current state of gaming and, you know, for me, from where I've come from, and it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's like looking at the red pill and the blue pill from the Matrix, right? It's that pill that you really don't want to swallow. We're, we're, we're annoyed, we're bothered because we don't want to have to do that. We don't like the way it is. You know, but this is reality. And that's, I started this video off by saying it is what it is, right? Is there really much we can do? People say, oh, we, if we stop buying their games, that's sure. <laughs> In an idealistic theoretical space that may work, 
But let's be real here. Gaming is too popular now. It doesn't matter if I had a huge content creator channel like some of these others. Even if someone big like Asmongold told all of his fans to boycott, guess what? Most of them probably wouldn't. They just wouldn't. If they wanted to play the game, they'll play it. Even after all of that controversy, even after all of that, people, there's still hundreds of thousands of players, if not a million plus, that play World of Warcraft. And just, just one example, right? It's, it's not, it's not enough, right? So, while it's, again, idealistic and thoughtful to think, hey, maybe we just stop giving them money. Come on. Like, Activision Blitter is the only company. I could talk a lot about others, right? Nintendo comes to mind, right? Sony, a lot of them make really poor decisions about that, you know? Donnie, what's going on? First time chatter. Thanks for joining. Just talking a little bit about, you know, the future of gaming and whatnot, um, and my concerns coming from a middle-aged gamer who's been doing it most of his life. So, this is what this is the state we're at, right? And I'm more inclined to, you know, go with the flow, play what I want to play. Uh, I'll say I'm more selective about games that I buy on release. I tend to look at games and say, okay, this game was pretty fun. I'll probably pick it up on a sale, you know, or this game is kind of interesting, but I'm not really a fan of this. Probably won't play it, you know, and. I just know that there's a ton of great games out there and experiences to be had, and I, there's not enough time to experience all of them. So I have to be a little more selective, you know, especially as you get older. And that's okay. That's all right, you know. Like, my son is very, very, he's a very eager um, gamer, and he has a lot of fun playing. And, you know, uh, I used to have that kind of energy. I don't really as much anymore for that. And so he, he really wants to get the most out of that. And... That's fine. He can do that now while he can, you know. Uh, I cannot. So I'm going to go with whatever makes sense for me um, and do what makes sense. You know? uh, what games you into? Uh, I think we've had enough. Of <laughs> uh, I'm into a lot of different kinds of games, uh, but I'll say uh, I like RPGs, uh, ARPGs. Uh, CRPGs, um, turn-based, isometric strategy games. I do enjoy those, and I enjoy some uh, first-person uh, immersive uh, games from time to time. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm not really that into uh, MMOs as much anymore. The only MMO I play from time to time uh, is Final Fantasy XIV. I'm not currently sub now for some time. I'm just playing through it like just on my own, the single-player uh, just because uh, I like the story and whatnot. So I'm definitely going to be a little more selective about what I play and what I do uh, with my time. And I encourage all of you to be the same. It's okay to be selective. And you know what? If you like a game and other people don't, that's okay too. You don't, you don't have to cater to the masses. When I saw people trying to boycott Hogwarts Legacy recently, for example, just because of what the author has said or done, I just think you got to separate those two things, a gaming experience and where a story is based off of or comes from. It's, it's just not the same thing, but you know, look, you do you, if you want to boycott fine, but going and trying to tell others to boycott or cancel them is really inappropriate. It just, it's just not okay. Let's, let's not add more <laughs> negativity to this, to this space. This is supposed to be a space where people are here to, to have fun, to de-stress, uh, to escape, that's that's some some of the common reasons that I play, right? Is that a Diablo picture behind me? Yes, that that is a dog. Those are Pokemon. Oh, sorry there. And Diablo pictures. That that's and Lord of the Rings and stuff. And there's a bunch of my daughter's toys behind me. This that's what my office has become. Really, <laughs> that's that's what it is. Um, uh, but thank you. Uh, so so yeah, that's that's just that's where we're at right now, and it's an adjustment. Uh, am I thrilled about it? Uh, in some ways, yes, I am. Because like I said earlier in this video, I'm really happy that gaming has become really popular and that so many more people get to experience it. I mean, for decades of my life, I 
you know, there are people who thought that what I do with my time with the gaming is was childish, you know? But can't really say that anymore. It's people of all ages are doing it, and I think it's really great, and they're very enjoyable. Don't forget that games are... Uh, they're engaging fr from a neurological perspective. They're engaging in a way that's very unique than other entertainment, you know? If you compare it, if you look at brainwave scans of people who are watching a show or a movie compared to people who are playing a game, you're going to see a much more active, uh, you're going to see a lot more neurons firing when you're playing a game, right? It's, it's much, it, it, you have to participate, you're making choices, you're doing things, you know, in a game as opposed to just simply watching and kind of taking in and, and absorbing something. So, you know, I find games to be really, really enjoyable. Uh, to the point where sometimes my wife gets, you know, a little, I, I guess I'll use the word annoyed because she says, well, so what are you going to do when you're older and you retire? Are you just going to game? I'm like, well, I'm not just going to game, but I mean, I'm still going to game <laughs> because uh, I think it's, I just, I just enjoy it. I really do. I think there's some really great, some of the some of the really memorable experiences of my life have been in gaming, you know? And I'm really glad that other people get to enjoy that. On the flip side, though, I'm not, again, it's an adjustment. I'm not a huge fan of of the monetization and whatnot. It's just become extremely lucrative, and I get that. And those people with deep pockets, it seems like it's never enough. They're so greedy, right? But, you know, you can make individual choices about that. You know, you don't have to buy into all those things, you know? And... And that's okay. That's fine. And if you do, then that's fine too, because it's your time, it's your money. I'm not going to judge you. You do whatever, do whatever you wish with that, you know? And, and all I can do is, is commit to doing the same, right? So do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And that's, that's what I intend to do. So anyways, you know, um, I think I'm going to end here. This video has gone on a bit. Uh, but uh, if you're still here, uh, if you still watch this, um, thank you for your time. I know time's valuable. I know my time's valuable. Thanks for listening to this uh, middle-aged gamer rant about <laughs> about gaming. And, you know, um, I'll see you next time. You know? And uh, maybe I'll see you in hell soon because it's coming today. All right? Take care for now. Bye-bye.